Well, thanks for popping by. Appreciate it. Well, I got the channelist going a little bit. It's kind of interesting. I was doing a little reading, and uh, like anything, there's a number of different versions of the channelist. A more modern version had some of the some of the jacks that this unit has are on the back. The more modern version has some of the jacks on the front, which probably made a little sense at the time. The, uh, the writer's channelist doesn't work the way I thought it did. I thought this was a generator and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. Um, these are basically your receivers. And um, this is a, a TRF receiver. It actually has enough sensitivity to uh, work as a radio. And the more I thought about that, the more I started to dawn on me that, you know, that actually is a piece of test equipment that you really don't have unless you butcher another radio. Um, I've seen guys do that before, and that, 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 that's kind of a clever idea, actually. You use a radio to, uh, another radio to receive the IF out of a radio you're under repair with. <clears throat> it does work. Um... One of the things the channelist did that, I don't know, I still don't know if it's a critical feature, but it does do it, is, uh, and it won't show it very well. There's a watt meter built in. You plug something in the back, and then you adjust this till it moves. Unfortunately, you can barely see that line move. See that white line appear right there? The uh, piece of test equipment I plugged in there to work with it is so, so low power that it doesn't even trip that meter. It's still an interesting feature, and I think one of the ICO um, pieces, like I want to say one of the cap meters or the RF generator or something, uh, has that feature. Oh, uh, it has the, like I said, it has a basic voltmeter which does work, although some of the test points do come out up front, and uh, you can use that to your advantage. What I've done here is I've taken and I've hooked the uh, a little speaker with a small amp inside it up to the output of the IF. They call the the channelist everything is a channel, like the uh, RF IF channel, the voltmeter channel, the AF channel, the they what they call the oscillator channel, and uh, that's how they break the thing down and tell you to look at it. And basically, it's roughly about five uh, test instruments in one bottle. Um, it's kind of clever. One thing it does have is uh, a pretty extensive book. It's 50 or 60 pages, and it does um, have some interesting test procedures that can be adapted to uh, today's technology or uh, today's techniques if you're working on some old pieces. Uh, basically, this is a TRF radio, and this is a kind of a, a tuned voltmeter, for lack of a better word. This was intended to look at local oscillators. And you hook all this up and play with it, and you can watch for intermittence and stuff. It's it's not a bad piece. It's Originally, I probably didn't sound too enthused about it, but I don't know. The new versions, too, have some kind of a standby switch to knock out the uh, magic eye tubes to try and extend their life. So I've got the... Uh, I've got a little antenna hooked up to the um, RF-IF channels. I'm going to see if I can tune any radio. It's sensitive enough to tune off-air. You kind of hear it. Now this is a little backwardy. Um, at least I feel it is. This um, this is the level control, and this is sort of the band control. And this is the sensitivity. You know, um, I was thinking that this way was more sensitive, and, and, and the number one is the most sensitive level. So it's kind of a pad, for lack of a better word. Now, in the schematic, it shows the number. Of, I think I thought I saw a number of capacitors. So I don't know if they just bleed that to ground or whatever. Anyway, we'll just. And we should see this eye close as the signal goes up. And of course it came unhooked. Oh, I suppose I'll have to. 
There are some other test points on the front. Those little pin jacks. Um, are actually taps from the Magic Eye Tube, so you can hook the voltmeter to here or here, and instead of a visual indication with the Magic Eye Tube, you can get a visual indication with the voltmeter, which is okay. It's just another way of using the thing. The level, everything seems backward to me. I mean, when you turn the level down. What's on that band? Nothing. the channel of so uh, kind of the RFIS section. Now over on the uh, oscillator section, um, same thing, excuse me, just can't. I just uh, got some new gum, so thank you so much for walking. I'm using a little uh, grid dip meter here as an oscillator, and basically I just lay in this probe over here and you can see this. can adjust the level the more closed it is the stronger it is so it would be a visual indication of you know you could see the oscillator you know if it was acting or emitting you could see the local screwing up on there and I believe there's an output for that on the back too And the uh, the AF section was just a signal tracer. I think the newer, the more modern version of this, I'm not sure how long they actually made this, actually had a jack on the front so you could put headphones or something in there. They probably discovered that it was pretty inconvenient to plug and unplug all that stuff on the back and have this scooched around. And I assume that the audio is... I don't know if it's like the rest of the analyst, it's probably backward. You know, it has some definite advantages. This one isn't a great example, but it is a working model. I don't know, it, uh, actually the ideas from it kind of sparked some interesting, um, 
kind of thoughts. You know, you couldn't make all this stuff in modern versions, especially if you're doing radio servicing. Um, actually, the uh, the receive on this side on the local oscillator goes pretty high. I think it goes to 15 kilohertz, which is pretty far. That would take you into the short wave band for a local oscillator. And there have been times I've had trouble with local oscillators on short wave radios on older ones, and they can be a little confusing if you're not used to them. But a piece like this would definitely reveal those things. Like I said, you may want to download the book. And take a good hard look at it. As far as being a really sophisticated or high dollar unit, I think this was about a hundred bucks back in the. I think they made these from the 30s to the 40s. Uh, yeah. And the uh, brochure, you can download the brochure for the thing too. The brochure is quite funny. Although it does have some interesting thoughts. So. Uh, there's plenty to be learned from some ancient technology. You know, it's about what, about 50, 60, 70 years old, and uh, I learned a few things. It, it is not at all what I thought it was. I thought it was a RF generator and an audio generator, and you know, just some standard pieces all crammed into a little bottle. Nope, it's different. It's basically um, kind of a series of tuned or tunable voltmeters. Uh, standard vacuum tube voltmeter. It would definitely take you uh, into some new areas and uh, let you hear what's going on. If you were chasing crackles or um, if you had like the silver migration disease, you know, in the IF transformer and stuff, or, if you're, or your IF strip or your radio, if you had one of those radios that had those types of IF cans, this would probably definitely sniff it out. I don't know. I might have to build a modern version of this. Uh, this one is, you know, I don't run a vintage shop, so I'll probably, to be really honest, I'll probably find a good home for this. Um, it's more of a curiosity or a novelty than anything. I just, to be really honest, I like to get a hold of older pieces and look them over and get them up and running and then um, find people that want to use them in their day-to-day -day trials. Hopefully. I really don't... Uh, think too much of letting pieces, getting pieces fixed up and then letting them sit on shelves. There are enough shelf queens in the universe. So there we go. There's the uh, RCA Writers Channelist. I'm not sure what model number this one is. I think the newer one is, uh, I think, a 162C. So I don't know if this is a... if this is like a 162A version or something like that. It does have some interesting metal work all this, I don't know if this will show up on the camera or not, and it'll try to... All this, this texture here is actually, is like a file. It's, it's somehow pressed into that. I don't know if that's a stamping or what that is. I bet that would clean up pretty nice with some just soap and water. It's a pretty nice piece. I'm glad I uh, discovered it's sitting in its little rotting. Now this uses the 6E5 uh, magic eye tubes. And there seem to be a kind of a mixture of them here. The bulk of them seem to be Sylvania. This one's a, a Kenrad, so it's been replaced. And I think maybe the original ones were the Balby Coke bottle type, maybe. So maybe all of these have been replaced. I did see guys saying, yeah, buy these to get the magic eye tubes out of them. Yeah, how about that? There's a special place in hell for people that buy equipment to cannibalize it. Now, if it's broke or a train wreck, that's a different story, but a working piece to cannibalize is... Uh, one of the crimes against the uh, universe, and uh, it'll catch up with you later. <laughs> I know it has me. So there you go. Take her easy. Have a groovy day.